Mohenjo-daro in this valley, the buildings turned to glass. The sand turned to glass. And the bodies are still laying in the street right now today, holding hands, never been scavenged by animals. They had no historical evidence of that. No, there's no test. It was not mentioned in any books. It was really? not, yep. It was, it was found as an accident. They, they found it by accident. This is evidence of a nuclear war. That's 3,000 plus degree temperature weapons fire. They explain how uh, the devastation looks, right? They talk about how high the temperature goes, how it looked like a sun when the, when the explosion happened, how all the vegetation was completely wiped off and there were no plants or trees growing for the next 12 to 25 years. They describe them, describe them as weapons that once released can't be revolted or can't be turned back and that they will obliterate any area, any city. Uh, and they say that uh, some of the, one of the weapons can destroy any man on three worlds. It's crazy stuff. And this is where Oppenheimer got his famous quote when he yeah. obviously tested the nuke. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. In the scorching deserts of southern Pakistan lies an archaeological site that defies explanation. A city frozen in time, now shrouded in mystery and the whispers of lost civilizations. Welcome to Mohenjo-daro. Once a thriving metropolis during the height of the ancient Indus Valley civilization, this city's remains have puzzled researchers for nearly a century. But why does this city, over 4,000 years old, seem to vanish suddenly from history? Could it be that some catastrophic event wiped it off the map? Perhaps even turning parts of it into glass? Discovered in 1922 by an Indian archaeologist, R. D. Banerjee, Mohenjo-daro is located on the banks of the Indus River. What the world came to learn through its excavations was the stunning complexity of this civilization. At its peak, Mohenjo-daro housed as many as 40,000 inhabitants. But the real intrigue lies in its infrastructure, a grid-like city layout, advanced water drainage systems, and meticulously built homes made of baked bricks, a city so well organized that it rivals modern urban planning techniques. But who were these people, and what led to their mysterious disappearance? Let's start by looking at what they built. The city is constructed using uniform, fired bricks, with some weighing over 15 pounds. The scale of the city is impressive, spanning more than 300 hectares, roughly the size of 500 football fields. Each house was carefully positioned to align with the cardinal directions. But how did an ancient civilization develop such precision without modern technology? A central structure known as the Great Bath is another remarkable feature of Mohenjo-daro. Measuring 12 meters long and 7 meters wide, the bath is built with watertight bricks and a sophisticated drainage system, indicating that water held immense significance for the people of Mohenjo-daro. It is one of the earliest public waterworks ever discovered. But what was the purpose of this massive structure? Was it purely for hygiene, or did it have deeper, possibly spiritual, significance? Let's pause to consider the most perplexing discovery. Some sections of the ruins appear to have been subjected to extremely high temperatures, enough to melt or vitrify stone, turning it into glass. This phenomenon is known as vitrification, something typically associated with nuclear explosions or volcanic activity. Yet, no evidence of volcanic activity or natural firestorms has been found in the region. Could it be that some ancient technology lost to time, was capable of unleashing such destructive energy. Some theorists have gone so far as to suggest that Mohenjo-daro might have been destroyed by an ancient nuclear explosion. It sounds far-fetched, but the vitrified remains beg for an explanation. But the mysteries don't end there. Among the discoveries were over 40 human skeletons lying in the streets and various parts of the city. These remains were not buried in the traditional sense, indicating that whatever caused the downfall of Mohenjo-daro was sudden and violent. 
Many of these skeletons showed no signs of trauma, yet some were found in postures, suggesting they were fleeing from something. What could have caused such mass panic and sudden death? Was it a natural disaster, a catastrophic flood, or perhaps something even more terrifying? Now, consider this. The massive stone blocks and materials used in the city's construction were not native to the immediate region. In fact, some of the stones used in Mohenjo-Daro's construction had to be transported from quarries located over 300 kilometers away. How did they manage to move such enormous stones without the aid of modern machinery? Could they have had access to technologies we still don't fully understand? This comparison often draws parallels to the pyramids of Egypt and the stone structures of South America, where similarly, large stones were transported over great distances. The sheer size and weight of the materials used in these ancient cities challenge our understanding of what was possible in the ancient world. Another fascinating question arises when we consider the precision of Mohenjo-Daro's urban layout. The city's advanced planning and uniformity seem almost out of place in the ancient world. How did a society, living over 4,000 years ago, manage to create such an organized and structured cityscape without modern surveying tools? It's as though they were working with knowledge that far exceeded their time. Could they have been influenced by some advanced, now forgotten culture? Some theorists have even suggested extraterrestrial intervention, pointing to the similarity between Mohenjo-Daro's design and other mysterious ancient sites across the world. But what happened to this great city? Why was it abandoned so suddenly? While some archaeologists believe that environmental factors, such as flooding from the nearby Indus River, might have played a role, the evidence of extreme heat and vitrified ruins adds an ominous layer to the mystery. Could the people of Mohenjo-Daro have been the victims of an ancient catastrophe so powerful that it erased them from history almost instantly. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of Mohenjo-Daro, we must also consider the broader context of the Indus Valley civilization. This civilization was one of the largest of the ancient world, spanning parts of modern-day Pakistan, India, and Afghanistan. Yet despite its vast size, we know shockingly little about its people, their language, or their beliefs. Their script remains undeciphered, and their disappearance from history is as sudden as it is puzzling. And what about the artifacts found here? Pottery, jewellery, and even toys have been unearthed. But perhaps the most enigmatic discovery is the so-called Dancing Girl, a bronze statuette of a young woman that seems to exude a sense of sophistication and artistic flair far beyond what we would expect from a society of this age. Who was she? What role did she play in this mysterious civilization? Now, what could have caused a thriving civilization to vanish seemingly overnight? Let's begin with the most debated theory, the possibility of an ancient nuclear catastrophe. At first glance, the idea of nuclear technology existing over 4,000 years ago seems impossible. Yet, the vitrified ruins, sections of stone turned to glass by intense heat, suggest that something extraordinary happened here. In the 1970s, physicist Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, who led the Manhattan Project during World War II, was asked if the nuclear bomb tested in 1945 was the world's first atomic explosion. His response was chilling. Well, yes, in modern times. Was he hinting at an ancient nuclear event? Could Mohenjo-Daro have been the site of such an explosion? Adding to the intrigue is the lack of traditional warfare evidence in the city. No mass graves, no clear signs of battle, no damage to the structures that would suggest a large-scale conflict. Instead, the bodies found in the city were seemingly untouched by violence, lying in the streets as though something much more sinister and sudden occurred. Could this have been an accident? A release of untamed energy? Or something more deliberate? akin to a weapon of unimaginable power. Then, there's the question of the city's eerie disappearance. Unlike other ancient cities that gradually declined over time, Mohenjo-Daro appears to have been abandoned swiftly, almost as if its inhabitants knew that staying would lead to their demise. 
If you found this video fascinating, prepare to be even more intrigued. Check out our next video, diving deep into the enigma of Zawiyet el Aryan, the pit in Egypt that seemingly exists outside of recorded history. We'll explore its mysterious origins, the baffling precision of its construction, and the theories surrounding its purpose. Get ready to journey into a truly perplexing piece of ancient Egyptian history. You're looking at the limestone interior of the Abu Ruwash pyramid, and this is the core. And we can descend into the core in this unique structure, unlike the other pyramids. Oh my God, what's this? Wow. deep pit uh, that, that, I, that looks to me like a boat pit no way look at these lines look Same at these striations like exactly look at these striations and also the higher parts and the lower parts shows that it's, it was exactly. not all cut at once exactly it was yeah. like especially know, here this here and here exactly yeah here and there exactly see what the blade came back and we are talking about red granite from Aswan how did they bring it up here? We are here in a, in a mountainous region. 